The four steps in this video will cover the response of the immune system to viral and bacterial infection, the difference between T cells and B cells, and provide an explanation of the adaptive immune system. Number one, there are two branches to the immune system. The two branches of the immune system can go by the names specific and nonspecific, innate and adaptive, as well as some other lesser common names. For the purposes of this video, the branches will go by the names innate and adaptive. The innate immune system is the immediate and quickest response to an infection. However, it is not very specific to any type of infection. Since the innate immune response is not very specific, it often is not enough of a response to contain the infection. This is the reason for the adaptive immune response. The remainder of this video will cover the adaptive immune response. For more information on the innate immune response, see the video on inflammation on this channel. Number 2. B cells and T cells are the fundamental cells of the adaptive immune response. The adaptive immune response consists of humoral-mediated immunity and cell-mediated immunity. Humoral-mediated immunity is the name for immunity that is provided by B cells. Cell-mediated immunity is the name for the immunity provided by T cells. Humoral is Old English, referring to the humors of the body, meaning the fluids of the body. B cells are able to provide immunity in the humors, or fluids of the body, because B cells secrete antibodies to circulate throughout the blood and other fluids of the body. If an infection has reached the inside of a cell, humoral-mediated immunity will not be effective. This is why cell-mediated immunity exists. T cells protect the body from infections that have reached the inside of cells. Thus, by providing immunity in the fluids of the body through B cells, and by providing immunity from infected cells of the body through T cells, the adaptive immune response is able to provide immunity throughout the human body. Number 3. B cells and T cells contain infections in different ways. In immunology, putting an end to an infection or bringing an infection under control is often referred to as containing an infection. While B cells and T cells are both components of the adaptive immune response, they contain infections in different ways. B cells produce and secrete antibodies. Antibodies are proteins that are able to bind to bacteria and viruses. Antibodies binding bacterial cells or viruses prevents infections from spreading. The antibodies block the bacteria from growing colonies and, in the case of viruses, the antibodies bind to the viruses and prevent the viruses from infecting cells. Any disease-causing agent, such as a virus, can be referred to as a pathogen. The process of antibodies binding a pathogen to contain the infection is known as opsonization. Opsonization by antibodies not only prevents the spread of infection, but marks the bacteria or viruses for destruction. Phagocytic cells circulating in the blood and fluid surrounding the tissues of the body can detect the presence of antibodies bound to pathogens and then engulf and destroy the opsonized bacteria or viruses. These phagocytic cells are not B cells or T cells and are part of the innate immune response. So while the process of opsonization is part of the adaptive immune response, the actual destruction of pathogens involves the innate immune response. Therefore, both branches of the immune system must work together for a complete immune response to infection. Further detail on this phagocytic process is provided in the video on this channel on inflammation. When a cell becomes infected and cell-mediated immunity is needed, T cells respond by killing the infected cell. There are numerous types of T cells. Cell-mediated immunity is largely dependent on a class of T cells known as CD8 cytotoxic T cells. The CD8 cytotoxic T cells are called cytotoxic because they are able to kill other cells. When a cell becomes infected with a virus, a CD8 cytotoxic T cell responds by killing the cell infected with the virus. Since viruses replicate inside of cells, killing the cell infected with the virus stops the ability of the virus to replicate. Additionally, while often not sufficient to rid the body of cancer, CD8 cytotoxic T cells are also able to kill cancer cells when they detect cells of the human body that have become cancerous. 
Thus, while CD8 cytotoxic T cells are killing cells of the human body, whether virus-infected or cancerous cells, this can actually preserve health overall in the body because the killing of the infected cells can stop the spread of the virus or cancer. Cell particles and viral proteins that are released into the fluids of the body after the infected cell is killed can then be destroyed by phagocytic cells, just as is the case with opsonization. To summarize adaptive immunity, B cells respond by releasing antibodies for opsonization of pathogens, resulting in the destruction of the pathogens. T cells respond to infected cells by killing the infected cells. Specificity is the basis of adaptive immunity. As previously mentioned, adaptive immunity is often a more effective response at containing an infection than innate immunity. This is because adaptive immunity is specific. What this means is that adaptive immunity is focused on one specific type of pathogen. For example, if a person is infected with a strain of the flu, the antibodies that protect from that infection are specific only to that one strain of the flu. If those same antibodies that stopped the spread of this one strain of the flu were then exposed to a common cold virus or a streptococcal strain of bacteria, the antibodies would not be able to bind and would not at all be effective in containing the infection. This is due to the specificity of the antibody binding site. The portion of the antibody that binds to a bacterial cell or a virus is known as the binding site. The binding site on an antibody has a specific shape. This shape determines what an antibody is able to bind to. If an antibody comes across a bacterial cell or virus, and the shape of the binding site on the antibody is not a good fit for the bacterial cell or virus, the antibody is not able to bind and will simply continue to pass through the fluids of the body. One B cell can secrete one type of antibody, meaning the antibodies will all have the same shape to their binding sites, resulting in the same specificity for one type of bacteria or virus. However, since all antibodies secreted from this B cell will have the same shape binding site, this means none of the antibodies secreted by this B cell will be effective at stopping a different kind of pathogen than the ones these antibodies are able to bind. For this reason, numerous B cells are needed for proper immunity. While one B cell may secrete antibodies with one binding site, another B cell will secrete antibodies with a different binding site, and so on, demonstrating the need for multiple B cells as part of the immune system. In the case of T cells, the T-cell receptor is the specific site. Just as is the case with the binding site of antibodies, the shape of the T-cell receptor on T-cells is what determines which infected cells a T-cell will bind to. If a T-cell comes across a cell infected with a virus and the T-cell receptor is able to bind the infected cell, the T-cell will become activated and release cytotoxic molecules that can kill the infected cell. The same T-cell, however, may come across a cell infected with a different virus, and the T-cell is unable to bind, and no cytotoxic molecules will be released. As is the case with antibodies, T-cells are specific to being able to respond to only one kind of virus. There are numerous T-cells, however, and an array of viral infections are able to be contained due to the variety of T-cells in the human body. The specificity of the adaptive immune response allows for a specialized, intense immune response to one pathogen. However, this specificity can also be a limitation, as it only allows for a very narrow range of pathogens each antibody or T cell can respond to. Thanks for watching, and remember to subscribe to our channel to see the latest videos on the science of human physiology.